All right, so let's look at an example of how we apply these ideas of a two-way test for association. Okay, so we'll call a data set we, we may have seen before here. All right, this is about students, whether they smoke or not, and their parents' smoking habits. Okay, so we have two variables, or what we might call two factors here. We've got our parents' smoking status. We've got our students' smoking status. All right, so this is a two by three table. All right, so I want to look and see, is there an association here? Now, upon investigation of the raw data, right, maybe you could come up with some marginal frequencies, marginal percentages, conditional percentages, right, and you could kind of visually see what we've got going on there. And, and that's one way of getting drawing some conclusions, but we want to draw exact conclusions here. All right, so our null is that there is no association, All right? So students and parents smoking habits, no association. The alternative is then that there is an association. Okay, so that's how we'd state our hypotheses here. So let's go about calculating our test statistic. Okay, so here is our observed data. We technically need to check our conditions. For that, we need the expected in order to calculate our expected. All right, so we're going to just focus. We're just going to focus on this first cell here, cell 1, 1. All right, remember, to calculate our expected, we take the row total times the column total, divide by our overall total. All right, so here, our row total for cell 1, 1 is in green. Our column total is in blue. Overall total in red gives us are expected for 1, 1 in purple there. All right, are observed in purple there. Are observed in cell 1, 1 is in yellow there. All right, we're going to then use that observed and expected to calculate each cell's contribution. Okay, so using the 400, the 332, we plug in to each cell's contribution, and I find that one in orange there. All right, so I'm just doing it for cell 1, 1 here. We would have to do it for all the rest of the cells, right? and then sum that up to find our overall test statistic. All right, found my test statistic. Let's find our p-value. So our p-value here would be represented like this. Remember, when we have a chi-squared test, we're, we're generally always running a right-tailed test. So our test statistic 37.57. Now we need to figure out our degrees of freedom. Remember we had a 3 by 2 table. Okay, so our degrees of freedom comes out to be 2. So looking at my table at 2 degrees of freedom, right, remember my test statistic was 37.57. So here's 10.597. It's definitely greater than this. So we estimate our p-value is very, very small. All right? I can check this in Excel. Again, using my chi-squared dist, right tail, 37.57, 2 degrees of freedom. And there we go. That's giving me a really, really small number. So estimating it, finding it with Excel, or you could also graph it. But our p-value is going to be really small either way. So large test statistic, small p-value, that tells us we reject. Now remember when we reject in a question like this, it's not enough just to say reject. we got to say, well, why did we reject? All right, so the way we figure that out, again, remember we go, we look at each cell's contributions, and we notice any large contributions. Now here's a pretty big one, here's a pretty big one. Okay, so I look back, so I see these contributions that I have in red here. All right. Now remember, a large contribution, it doesn't tell us if our observed is way more than what we expected or way less, so we have to go back and examine that ourselves. All right, so we expected about 332 students to smoke when both of their parents smoked, but actually we saw higher. Okay, so this cell observed was higher than what we expected. This cell's observed was lower than what we expected. Okay, so looks like more students who both their parents smoke are smoking. 
all other things equal, and less students where neither of their parents smoke are smoking. Plugging this into Minitab, I've got my data here organized in a table. Right? Sometimes we may have the raw data, sometimes we may have it organized in a table. All right, so when we go to here to stat tables, chi-squared test for association, okay, we don't have the raw data, we've got data summarized in a table. So here we do have to be kind of careful. All right, so I can tell it. So we see that our actual numbers are in rows or in columns C2 and C3. Right, so that's where our table lies. And then we have a nice option that Minitab gives us here that'll kind of help us keep everything straight. We can include those, we can include our column and row labels. All right, so our rows are labeled here in column one, both one. Our column names are already included there. Okay, so another option that we have here that I want to usually want to click here is when I go to options, right, it's going to give us our observe, it's going to give us the marginals, but I also want each cell's contributions. Okay, that's always nice to have in case I reject, I can go back and look. All right, so click OK here, and it gives us all the information we need. It should match up with what we calculated on our own. Large chi squared, small p value, two degrees of freedom, and we have everything nice, nice and labeled. Alright, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.